Hello there and welcome back to linuxjobber.com where we prepare you for Linux jobs. My own name is Shopop Shonmi Joseph and my email is shopopolos at gmail.com. So if you have any questions, please uh, send me an email and I'll be sure to respond. For today, we will be looking at basic networking in um, computers in general. So if you go to our website, linuxjobber.com and you go to establishing network and network services this is what we're going to be looking at today the, the the number one link now there are two links to this the first link is what we're going to be looking at today which is just a general overview of networking in computers now the second one is the actual work which is where we do the command line of troubleshooting and testing networks but the first one which is just general overview and explanation of computers computer networking that this is what we're going to be treating today now with that said I'm going to get started quickly so the first thing we're going to be looking at is computers what is computer networking when someone says computer networking what are they talking about computer networking is simply one computer talking to another computer or another set of computers so let's take for instance you have a computer we call some computers clients because that's what you're working on. So I'm going to represent it with like a laptop. My drawing may not be the best here, but so let's say this is a computer and this computer needs to talk to this other computer here. Now, let me say I bring it down here and there's a computer here and these two computers need to talk to each other. That's what we call computer networking. Nothing more than that. Um, computer networking is not complicated at all. It's just one computer talking to each other via some kind of medium. And this is what we call computer networking. Now, when does computer networking start to get complicated? Computer networking starts to get complicated and it becomes a field of study when there is something in between the two computers that need to talk to each other. So let's say for instance now, these two computers, they want to talk to each other, but there's a broken link here. And this broken link, let's say we now represent it with something called a router or a switch, which means that this computer here actually connects to this router. And then this router in turn connects to the second computer. Now, this is where networking starts to get a little complicated but even then it's still easy so let's see how networking works so suppose this computer here is actually my computer and my computer the IP address is 192.168.0.5 this is my I, my computer and this is its IP address and the name of it is my name is Joseph so I'm gonna say Joe PC, Joe PC equal to. So this is its IP. This is the name of the computer. This is its IP address. The other computer here is actually Google.com. This is where I want to go to Google.com. And let's say I represent it with Google.com. Google.com equal to 68.42.5. Nineteen. So this is Google.com. Now my computer wants to talk to Google.com, but if you think about it very well, we human beings like to think of Joe PC and Google.com. No one wants to remember 192.168.0.5 or 68.42.5.19. No one actually wants to remember that. That's too difficult for our brains. We like it simple, like Google.com or just JoePC.com. That's what we human beings like to do. Now, here's the problem. The computer does not know anything called um, JoePC or Google.com. Computer only remembers the IP addresses. But we human beings remember the names. So when you go to your computer and you want to go to Google.com, really, you just want to go to your URL bar and just type in google.com right here you don't want to type in 68.42.5.19 it's too much for you so how does the computer how does the computer joe pc know that 
the traffic is supposed to go to this computer 68.42.5.19 now here's the problem there's, there's the problem that I just mentioned the computer does not know the IP address how does the computer get to know the IP address what happens is, really is that in the middle of the two computers somewhere there's something called a DNS server it's a domain name server it's DNS I'm gonna write it down here so now this DNS keeps a mapping of domain name to IP addresses so this computer here called Joe PC does not know the IP address of google.com and it does not need to and this google.com does not need to have its own IP address stored there's the computer in the middle called a DNS server DNS let me write it down here so that you can see it. it's a DNS server and it actually stores that name Joe PC equal to 192.168.0.5 and then it also stores inside itself let me make this clear very clear google.com equal to 168 uh, uh, I said 68 dot it really doesn't matter what the IP address is dot 19 dot 4 dot 21 so whatever the IP address is this DNS server stores everything inside itself it's the mapping now the computers don't need to remember each other's IP address obviously they, they would there's something called a cache which helps them store it we'll worry about that later but let's just worry about the foundation right now of computer networking so what happens is, is that this DNS server that's sitting in between the two computers actually does store all this information so now this is how computer networking then works so now if computer Joe PC wants to talk to google.com what happens is is that it first of all send it you know, first of all you first of all type in google.com right here because you want to talk to google.com you type in google.com right here into your URL bar the computer does not know what google.com is so first of all it sends that information that request we call it request it sends the request to the DNS server it says who is google.com so that's what your computer actually does it sends the request that you typed in you type in google.com it sends that google.com request to the DNS server then the DNS server then responds and says oh I know who that is if you want to go to google.com I know who to send you to I know the IP address here's the IP address and the computer the DNS server then returns that IP address of google.com that it has stored inside of it already 68.19.4.21 it sends it back to the computer now the computer knows who google.com is now the computer can then send that information can, can send the packet because now it knows the IP address it sends it to the router say here's who I need to talk to and then the router then sends the information to google.com because they now know the IP address right here given by the DNS server otherwise they would not know what to do if there was no DNS server but let's just say for instance in a world where there is no DNS server so we're just imagining if the DNS server was, in, was missing what do we do what can happen so now I'm going to cross out the DNS server so we do not have a DNS server but we do remember the IP address of google.com to be 68 68.19.19.4.21 we do remember the IP address but we just don't want to type this whole IP address because it's just so long we don't want to type it into our URL bar right here so what do we do every computer has something called a host file whether it's Windows or it's Linux it has a host file inside of it this host file can pretty much mimic the function of the DNS server 
in just just a little bit it doesn't do exactly everything but at least it will tell we can go in there and write in there google.com google.com equal to 68.19.4.21 so pretty much we're telling this computer how to find google.com so that when we want to send information if the computer does not if the computer tries to reach a dns server and it finds out that there is no dns server it can look inside the host file and say okay i'm gonna i already know who google.com is i already know its ip address and now i'm going to send the ip address directly to google.com or through the router and to google.com but but what happens is is that the only disadvantage of this is that if we have another machine here now on our network so let's say this is a co-worker of mine and his ip and her computer her name is kim so let's just say this is kim's machine kim is my co-worker right so kim kim pc equal to uh 192.168.0.21 or let me say 22 22 all right so now kim pc is not going to know the ip address of google.com because we have only put that ip address in joe pc and that's the problem because if you type in google.com into kim pc it's not going to know who it is because we didn't put it inside its etsy host file it does not know google.com because it says the host file is empty we did not put google.com inside that's the reason we use dns servers so if you use a DNS server, if you use a DNS server, it doesn't matter what the machine is, they're all going to come to the DNS server to query for IP address, and that IP address will always be available. So I'm going to use red for DNS server, meaning it's very important so that that way any machine that's on the network can, if they want to know who Google.com Google is, they can send a request down to the DNS server and the DNS server will then return the IP address. And if it's the same machine, we don't have to use the Etsy host file. If this machine needs to find out who Google.com is, it just needs to send the request down to the DNS server. Let me put it there, DNS, complete that. And the DNS server is just going to return the IP address of Google.com. That's pretty much how computer networking is. Now, there are some troubleshooting steps that you might need to learn about computer networking and a whole bunch of things that we need to do. Test all of these things out. Put three computers in the network and test every, everything out and see how they work. And learn how to troubleshoot um, if the router becomes unavailable in between or the DNS server becomes unavailable or then uh, the google.com is unreachable where did the problem come in or if joe pc needs to talk to kim pc it's just joe pc and kim pc and it becomes unreachable what do we do so we're going to learn all of these things in the step two of the video which is what i ex i showed you earlier how to get to it so if you wanted to get to it you would go to if you wanted to get, get to it, you go to, you click on the second establishing network and network services. You click on the second link right here to get to it. So in order not to make the video very long, I will stop right here and continue that one in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. My own name is Shounmi Joseph and our website is www.linuxjobber.com where we prepare you for Linux jobs. If you have any questions, feel free to send it to showpopulous at gmail.com and I'll be happy to answer your questions for you. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a nice day.